Hey, potato editor again. Don't worry, I didn't lose the file again. I just wanted to let you know that I'm quite new to Applied Energistics too. So there will be a lot of noodles and spaghettis in this video. And I might not know how to explain it myself. So don't worry, the spaghetti will be less spaghetti in the next episode. Just wanted to let you know that. Thanks. Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone. This is your future favorite potato, just another potato, and welcome to another video of Enigmatica 9, Expert. And today, we are finally going to set up some apply energistics around our base. Now there's been a bunch of preparation for this episode. The first thing I do, of course, is prepare this small zone, uh, where I will be putting our main ME controllers, as well as I've been preparing some energy acceptors and cells, some ME chest, uh, cell workbench, ME drives, stuff for wireless terminal. Anyway, actually before even starting to setting up the ME system, we actually need to craft the controllers. And we got our 28 controllers. Do we need this much controllers? Uh, not really. <laughs> At least for this small system that we are going to have. I don't think we really need this much uh, controllers. But I want to start building it like how my idea is uh, right now. So that's why I need uh, this much controllers. So inside this, this small uh, place I want to build our main controller. It's not the most efficient way of building the controller, but it will work. For now we will power it directly through pulsating crystals, and we might upgrade later on if needed. Now I'm going to be honest with you, I know this is not the, the most effective way of sending our source to here. <laughs> And I think I'll actually need to hook up a couple more of... Yes, may maybe I'll have to hook up a couple more of Bright Pulsating Crystals to this. The main controller is done. This is going to be our main controller. Before even connecting cables and P2P channels and other stuff like that, maybe it's going to be intelligent to first disconnect this. <laughs> And also these two. We can connect it uh, later on. For now, now that we know that this is working, let's do our passages to all the places that we want to to send uh, applied energistics to. There's been a lot of mining to do. The idea is for now to send AE to two directions: one for for our wheel sprigs, Rigmir and Amethyst columns, and the other one for the main base. So I finished digging up all of the um, all of the places that I will be hooking up uh, an AE system. Uh, yes, so let's just start here. If we come to this site, we will find here our golem uh, our golem chambers. So everything related with Amethyst golems. In here we will have our first wheel wheel sprig drawer. In this part we will have one of well our only Drake Mirror Drawer. If we come here, we will have our second weird list brick drawer. If we come back here, if we follow this weird path, all of this line will be component production. So somewhere here is the the line with the with the model with the modular routers and and all of the uh, liquid pipe aura uh, thing with it above component production. If we turn this here, around this place is uh, Pneumatic Craft, and around this place is Powa. And if we come here, just below the, um, just below this, uh, this place that we were in, 
of our latest energy sticks if we can find our imbuement chamber zone. So maybe first we can connect we can connect this side of, of the base. So the one with all of these uh, the charm people. In this case, what I want to do is set import buses in the drawers. This way we can observe uh, the drawer uh, through our network. So we use four channels here. I'm not really sure if I'm going to be using more channels around this zone or not, but just in case, I'll be setting up a, an, uh, a P2P channel in here. Just in case. Because maybe we need to extend this cable somewhere else around this zone instead of this zone here. Well, I think it's going to be a good idea to, to leave only one channel being used, being used here instead of the five channels that we're going to be using here. I think it's always good to have uh, to use the P2P channels, I don't know. It will make our life easier. Now the next thing I want to set up very quick is here another storage bus in this zone of ore processing. What I'll do here though is set up a P2P channel here. This P2P channel is going to be only for main storage. I want to add another P2P channel in here. The same, this P2P channel will be for implement chambers and we might we might have to add a second P2P channel here but for now one will be enough. Now I will leave this zone of component production either for later or for the next episode when we'll be doing auto crafting and passiving stuff. But the idea is the same, is to, is to install some P2P channels in here so we can have uh, more channels uh, being used. The same here, I want to have one P2P channel already installed here. This is going to be for, this is going to be for power, power mod, that is around this zone. And the same here, I want to leave another P2P channel installed here. And this is going to be for pneumatic craft. Well, now that everything is set up, now we can start to to connect this into our ME controller. The idea is to use as most faces of a controller as possible. We can also connect up to 8 P2P tunnels to a single cable from the controller and then extend it to a secondary controller, which will act as a median between the main controller and the P2P's inputs and outputs. The secondary controller is of no use other than giving the output tunnels a location and because of that no cable must be directly connected to the main controller. Using a blank card we can connect two P2P tunnels. Always make sure that both P2P tunnels are on the same subnetwork, meaning that they should be connected by the same secondary controller. We can do the exact same thing here. Let's grab one of these cables. And of course we need to give this energy. So let's do this. Let's grab a cable anchor. We should have channels in here. Nice. Very nice, very nice. And now we can just uh, start connecting stuff. And I think one of the things we are going to start with is our main storage room. That's going to be the first thing we are connecting. After connecting the P2Ps, I had some cleaning to do. For the main storage, I mostly only connected the bolts with some storage buses and added some MB drives, but we, we, we are still not going to use them yet.
don't know. But what we can do first, actually, we can grab our wireless at this point, our wireless crafting terminal, and some boosters. Let's put the access point somewhere near here. It has to be connected into the into the main controller. So what I will do is grab some dense cables and I'll think I'll grab it from here. Yeah. And we can put a wireless terminal access point. We can put 32 wireless boosters. So and we grab this ME security terminal. We should do this. And then this is linked. And we can access our terminal uh, in a radius of 197 meters. 197 blocks. There is also another P2P channel I want to connect right now. And that should be this one at or processing. No, I forgot I had to I had to connect this directly. I need to connect this into a P2P channel. So I can do something like this, like this, and then I grab the linking card. Like here. And now I should also be able to view all my crude iron ingots and stuff. From this bolt here. That's very nice. That's very nice. The last thing to connect for today is related to source production. Now that we have an ME system, we can easily export amethyst shards to our network, into our mixers, and even set some level emitters to turn off the mixers if we are low on amethyst. And as you can see, we are now producing liquidified source passively. Now everything turned back to be a uh, spaghetti again. <laughs> uh, but yeah, sadly you will have to expect a bunch of spaghetti coming on in the next episodes. <laughs> Especially because it is actually my, my first time using applied and energy sticks. So Yes, I'll be doing a lot of spaghetti all around the base with the fluid pipes right here. I mean, what is this? <laughs> what the hell is this? Applied Energistics has come to our enigmatic garden. With that, that's the end of the episode. Um, that doesn't mean that I'm done with Applied Energistics. There are two things missing still. The first one is setting up auto crafting and the second one is setting up some passive resources both of them shouldn't be that hard to, to implement but yeah it, it is still a bit of work to do especially some workplay with uh, storage drawers and stuff like that but i really hope that to be a quick episode <laughs> and not take that much time as i take as i took with this episode but anyway Applied Energy Logistics is done. Implemented, I mean. We still need to do auto crafting and passive thing and stuff. Uh, but that's all for today. If you are still here, thank you for watching. And as always, I hope you have a better day. Because it can always be better. And I'll see you next time. Mm, bye.